Welcome to Dot Headlines, I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in today's news, we travel to China and see how Xiamen City volunteers are providing emotional support and care for survivors of a recent bus fire. Walking out of the shadow of despair, we meet a blind city care recipient who makes sticky rice dumplings for volunteers every year during the Dragon Boat Festival. And lastly, in Taiwan's anti-drug campaign, we take a look at the confession of a former drug user and his current message of just say no. We start the show in China. On June 7th, 47 people died and 37 were left injured as fire engulfed a BRT bus, which stands for Bus Rapid Transit, a mass transit system in Xiamen. City volunteers rushed to the scene after hearing the news and for the past few days have done their best to comfort and console the families of victims, many who have not left the hospital since the tragedy occurred. After getting a green light from the local government, volunteers rush to Xiamen's number one hospital with tea, blankets and love as they do their best to care for the families of the victims of the recent BRT fire. After talking with hospital officials, volunteers look to the families. This family has had a hard time accepting what has happened, which is that their son has been severely injured. In fact, those severely injured were all young, the oldest being 31, and the rest of them are in their 20s. From June 7th until today, families have been on edge with worry and fatigue as they remain by the victim's side. What they need now is rest. The volunteers have divided the families into seven areas. Following, the hospital is able to give everyone a place to rest in the afternoon while the volunteers will provide you with food and drink. Blankets are handed out to keep family members warm in both heart and body. The hospital is working hard to save their lives of those injured and help them recover as fast as possible. We have transmitted this message to the families to help them worry less. From the day after the incident, 12 volunteers from Taiwan, Xiamen, Zhangzhou were already preparing assistance materials and measures to help these families through this difficult time. Next is another fire story, but set in Taiwan. A couple of days ago, in Dun Taipei City's Zhonghe District, a home was intentionally set on fire. As the police conduct their investigation, city volunteers quickly arrived to comfort the startled neighbor with Master Zhen Yin's words and blessings. Here's our report. It was about 3 in the morning and I heard people yelling below. When I opened the window, I saw the blaze and screamed, fire, fire. Mr. Fan is still frightened when recalling the terrible fire that took place in New Taipei City's Zhonghe District. Thankfully, city volunteers are here to console him. City is so kind. The home where the fire started is charred and blocked off by the police. It just so happens that a city recycling volunteer lives right above the unit. Thick black smoke was everywhere. It was quite scary. Seeing it on TV in the past is nothing compared to the up close and personal experience. It was really scary. Fortunately, the place did not cause damage to other homes. Volunteers brought apples and ginseng aphorisms to share with residents to help put their heart at ease. There are 50 of us in 80 households in this community. We will visit each one. Praying the tragedy will not happen again. Volunteers hope that peace soon return to this community. According to a 2008 report of the Malaysian Radiological Society, the number one and number two killers of women are breast cancer and cervical cancer. Out of every 100 Malaysian women who are diagnosed with cancer, 31 suffer from breast cancer and 12 from cervical cancer. With regular health checkups key to discovering these forms of cancer in the early treatable stages, the Malaysian government enlisted the help of city volunteers to hold a free clinic for the country's many Burmese refugees. Officials hope that such steps will leave these women better informed of possible health risks and the need for regular checkups. In Malaysia, the number one killer in women is breast cancer, followed by cervical cancer. To help those, they might be at higher risk due to lack of access to medical care. Medical authorities pair up with Kuala Lumpur City volunteers to provide a free health clinic for Burmese refugees. 
They often come to see us rather late in pregnancy, and so it is more difficult for us to take care of their medical problems. Today is a happy day for everyone, seeing that our government has started to pay more attention to the health of the refugees we have in this country. Carefully writing down preventative measures, the doctor's clear instructions are translated sentence by sentence from English into Burmese. Today, it was great. I felt really involved. My mom passed away from breast cancer, so I am happy and relieved to learn how to check for breast cancer myself. Although the examination room is an intimidating place for many of these women who are here for the first time, volunteers help calm their fears. The doctor asks also, we ask also to know, so very difficult, but we must be patient. I can help, I happy. If you focus on the female's health, guide them, work together with them, the whole nation and the whole family will prosper. For the majority of these women refugees, this was their first health checkup ever received. Thanks to the kind efforts on the part of many, their health is now in good hands. <laughs>
These zongzi are filled with our love and blessings. We hope everyone can sense our sincerity and blessings when they eat them. Seeing Ziji volunteers, Senior Gong is very happy. She says to be able to receive delicious vegetarian zongzi from the volunteers has made this holiday extra special. Thank you for delivering these vegetarian zongzi to me. I will offer them to the Buddha. I hope everyone can live in peace and harmony. Meanwhile, in Taipei's Nangang district, Ziji volunteers are also busy making the delicious glutinous rice dumplings to celebrate the Dragon Boat Festival. We want to promote vegetarianism to members of the public, so we've made some multi-grain glutinous rice dumplings. As soon as the zongzi are ready, volunteers go door to door to hand them out to solitary seniors. Ziji volunteers also visit a local police station with their love filled zongzi. Other than the delicious glutinous rice dumplings, volunteers also hand out peace chimes as a token of their love and gratitude for these hardworking guardian angels. <laughs> In Taiwan, a 72-year-old city care recipient, Ms. Xiao, lost her sight because of a car accident, and while hospitalized, her adopted daughter abandoned her. Left with nothing, the senior felt she was at the last jaw. However, in the past 12 years, with city volunteers' love and care, Xiao has finally let go of her past and began life anew. Treating the volunteers like daughters, Mama Xiao makes sticky rice dumplings to share with them every year during Dragon Boat Festival. Let's take a look. Making sticky rice dumplings is not an easy task for anyone, let alone the visually impaired Miss Xiao, who makes them every year during the Dragon Boat Festival to share with city volunteers. Several years ago, a car accident robbed Miss Xiao of her sight, and her adopted daughter abandoned her while Xiao was in the hospital undergoing surgery. These setbacks have made her drown in self-pity. Sometimes when I chant sutras in front of the Buddha, tears would fall. It's probably because I haven't done enough. I wasn't filial enough to my own parents, so that's why my child treats me like this. However, the senior did not give up on life. Living on government subsidies, she used the money left over from paying rent to help others. There's no use arguing. It's all a part of life. Our lives are predestined, so I don't need to think about it too much. I stopped by today to see her and saw how she's walking with more difficulty than before. My heart just ached. Her sticky rice dumplings are made very beautifully. You can see the effort she put into it. Now, Miss Xiao puts her heart into practicing recycling. Walking out of the shadows of despair, she lives brightly immersed in the joy of doing her part for society. In Malaysia, to mark the Dragon Boat Festival, Tsuji volunteers in Kedah joined together to make sticky rice dumplings for an upcoming charity sale to raise funds for the new dialysis center and education building. Here's more. Stir frying the ingredients for sticky rice dumplings, Kedah Tsuji volunteers come together to make the traditional snake, which will later be sold for charity to fund a new dialysis center and education building in Malaysia. No, I'm not tired at all. Even if I feel tired, my happiness is overwhelming. I live in Alosa Toys Jutra, so I had to set off at 4.30 a.m. When I arrived, it was already 5 a.m. I was full of energy when I arrived here. When I stay at home, I would get bored and tired easily, so I joined Siji's volunteer work. Since I have joined Siji, I become more optimistic. Before, I often got upset by many things, but now I learn to let go of unpleasant things. Making sticky rice dumplings as a way to do good deeds. The volunteers' devotion makes the Dragon Ball Festival one full of warmth and love.
number of youths involved in drug use in Taiwan has been on the rise over the years. What's even more concerning is that these drugs have found their way onto school campuses. According to statistics released by the Department of Health's Food and Drug Administration, 55.8% of drugs given to users are not supplied by dealers, but in fact by students, colleagues, or friends. Today, we look at the story of a college student whose one wrong step tarnished him for life. Regretful for his actions and determined to start anew, not only has he refuted the use of narcotics, he also encourages his friends not to let their life go to waste with continued use. I remember the first time very clearly. I was at school lying on a chair. What I saw was my own reflection in the ceiling, staring back at me. I guess this was me escaping reality. From that day on, my life was tarnished and tainted with another erasable mark. It all started when I went to a friend's birthday party with my other friends. When they took it out, the atmosphere in the room changed. Then one by one, everyone started getting hazy. The light in the room got dimmer and the music got louder. Then of course, the police showed up. By the time I woke up the next morning, my mother had already received news of our incident, and it was already in the papers. If you had to ask me how my family reacted to this, I say the person most hurt by this was my mother. He was like a drifter. He looked like he was in a trance all day long. His skin looked dull and he didn't have much of an appetite most of the time. He also had a temper and didn't want to listen to what others had to say to him. That's what he was like during that time. In the beginning, he didn't admit to me that he was wrong. He only held on to my hand, but when he eventually confessed to using drugs, I just fell apart. I told him it's alright to make a mistake, but he needs to face up to his wrongdoings and find a way to start over. If I could make the choice again, or look back at the choice that I made, I don't think I would be so stupid. It comes down to friends. It's the peer pressure or when you act in the spur of the moment that will land you in a situation you will regret later. Sometimes when you go out with friends, you have no idea what they are showing you or who brought it. You try it because you are curious and your pals are enticing you to do it. In the beginning, it felt cool. You feel like by doing this, it will win you a lot of friends. Trying it, it will change your life forever. It will leave you with nothing but regret for the rest of your life. So don't ever take that step. In Hualien, Taiwan, on June 12, a graduation ceremony for 471 students was held at the Affiliate Senior High School of Tsuji University for the high school, elementary, and kindergarten division. On stage, students performed a sign language song to express their gratitude to their teachers' love and support. Meanwhile, a father also went on stage to thank Tsuji for changing not only his son, but also himself. On stage, students of Tsuji Elementary School and Kindergarten perform a sign language song to express their gratitude to their teachers and parents for guiding them on their path of education. Tsuji's humanistic education not only influenced students but also their parents. After joining the musical adaptation of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents, Guo Chengxiang says he has rediscovered his love for his mother. My mother left me when I was only six years old. 
but I knew that she has already done many things for me. Ziji inspired me to look for my mother, and I was lucky enough to find her. Thanks to Ziji's humanistic teachings, now I have the chance to spend time with my mother once again. All parents have high expectations for their children, and under the guidance of Ziji, children learn to appreciate their parents' hard work. Your expectations help us to move forward. Although sometimes we have arguments, through interacting with each other, we learn to grow and become better people. Although their journey at the schools is coming to an end, 471 students are now ready to start a new chapter in their lives with blessings from their parents and teachers. Ziji volunteers from eastern China recently traveled to Taiwan to visit the birthplace of Ziji. Before going to Hualien, they first visited Taichung Ziji Hospital, where they learned more about the NGO's unique brand of medical services. Many of the volunteers said this trip to Taiwan has given them a chance to gain a better understanding of Ziji's humanitarian spirit and mission. As the 150 Ziji volunteers from Eastern China arrived at the Taichung Ziji Hospital, the hospital's superintendent and medical staff are already at the front door to welcome their special guests. These guests are excited to learn more about Ziji. The real Dharma lies in Taiwan's Hualien, which is our spiritual homeland. I think it is essential to come and learn the real Dharma. Hospital volunteers give their guests a guided tour, introducing them to the various medical equipment and hospital wards. The superintendent says he hopes the volunteers from China can get a clearer idea of the medical mission being carried out here in Taichung. What's most important is to put the elements of care and love into the doctor-patient relationship as a way to better prevent and treat disease. Following their visit to the Taichung Ziji Hospital, the volunteers will next travel around the island to return to their spiritual homeland, Hualien. There, they will not only learn about Ziji's humanitarian spirit, but also further enrich their mind and soul. Lastly, in Taiwan's Taichung Parents Association, for persons with intellectual disabilities set up a recycling station for those who suffer from mental disabilities and are unable to find a regular job to make ends meet. In the process, much of the trash becomes treasures and the recycling station thus also serves as a second-hand store for the public who's looking for a bargain. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.